Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn and today we are going to implement the ordinary list square method in Python. So we are going to do the step by step uh, coding in Python as well as we'll see how we can use the scikit-learn library which can simplify our code and as well as our life. <laughs> All right, so before we jumpstart, let's remind ourselves that you know when we were deriving the math behind the OLS method, we found that the coefficients of a OLS method, the solution was given by something like this, x transpose, so x is nothing but the data matrix, basically which is all the features, dot product with itself, taking an inverse of this one, dot product of the transpose of the data matrix, and dot product of y, and this will give us the best uh, parameters of that model so that we can based on that mo uh, model parameters we can do the prediction on our new data okay so now let's see first how we can implement this method in python then we will see how we can use the scikit-learn library to simplify this process so first of all we will try to create a step-by-step -step roadmap so that it becomes easier for us to understand what are we actually trying to implement and how are we trying to implement it okay so let's get started okay so how the roadmap will look like in order to demonstrate this simple project is first of all we will create some data set we'll generate it basically so we'll create some data set for x and some for y keep this in mind we'll also add some noise because in real world project we will not be able to find out all the features that will explain the every bit and pieces of the data so there will be always some noise so we'll also include that in our original data set which will be this one okay after that remember in our data matrix we also had a column where we had all the ones because we are trying to include the intercept as well right so this is feature one feature two and so on and here we had a column of one so we'll then add that column of one in our data matrix and also then we will try to plot the data a uh, scatter plot so that we can see the relationship between x and y then we'll solve the coefficients and the intercept using the expression which was given by x transpose dot x times inverse of this one times the dot product of x dot y so we'll try to you know build this expression and solve the coefficients values okay then we'll take some new data and we'll try to make some predictions here okay and once we make the predictions we'll try to again plot to see whether we were able to plot a linear model or not so this will be the entire journey for this python code and once we saw all the steps then we will see how sklearn or the scikit-learn library makes it so easy for us to implement it all right so i have already written the code so that i i can explain it better because sometimes it becomes very challenging to type the code and explain them all right so as we have seen in our roadmap the first thing that we are going to do is generate some data so the gen data is given by capital X which will be for the features and Y will be the, uh, the output value or the dependent variable here. Okay, so in order to generate the data, we are going to use the random method from the NumPy library. And what we are trying to do here is we are trying to generate 100 rows of data and only one column. Okay, so that is why you see rand within 100 comma 1. That means we are just trying to generate 100 rows and just one features here okay we can of course do multiple features that we'll subsequently see in our lectures but for the time being to keep it simple we are just taking one feature all right and y is given by 4 plus 3 times of the x plus some gaussian noise that means again we are including some random noise because in real world we cannot predict each and everything so we want to keep some portion of the data as a random noise okay and my expression is given by y plus 3x plus some noise which is nothing but your equivalent to y is equal to mx plus b so the intercept b here is 4 and the slope is 3 
okay and some noise so now let's plot this uh, relationship between x and y and that we can simply do by the scatter plot x comma y x is the original features y is the original data uh, the output variable and if we plot it we can see that there is in fact a linear relationship that we were able to generate now this is the original data okay now the next step is if you see line number 17 we have to make sure that we are adding a column of ones right because we have to make sure that the data matrix also includes that intercept value and that is the reason we are adding a column of ones within the data matrix okay so and that is can be simply done by the numpy method c underscore that means it is going to add a column okay you can if you want to add a row then you have you can use np dot r underscore and if you are adding a column that is np dot c underscore and you are just generating a column of ones using np dot ones and you are including that within the data matrix x as simple as that now if i see what my array consists of then you can see there is a column one and the random values that i have generated in my previous step okay so this is my entire hundred records that i have created don't worry about the data right now uh, this is just random values okay now my next uh, step is to calculate the coefficients and for that we have that formula x transpose dot product with x taking the inverse of this expression then doing a dot product with x transpose and then doing a dot product with the output value that can be implemented by two functions from numpy library one is the linear algebra inverse function and the dot product function and you can see you can simply write np dot lean elch dot inverse and then we are putting that inverse expression dot product of that matrix data matrix and dot product of the output variable and when we plot out my coefficient i can see that i have calculated 4.452 and so on and 3.020 but if you see in my original expression if i go all the way up you can see my original intercept was 4 and my slope was 3 but when we predicted my slope became 3.02 which is pretty close to my original slope but also if you see uh, my intercept is little bit off now this actually tells that in the real world we are not able to uh, predict each and everything and there will be some noise present within our prediction okay now that we have the coefficients uh, for my model and here we have only the two parameters which is m0 and m1 that we have seen in our theoretical class let's use that to predict make some prediction okay all right so my new data i'm taking three new values now so i'm taking three values of x which is 0 2 and 5 these are three more rows of data on which i want to predict my y values okay so what i am doing is now again on this same new data i have to make sure i am adding a column of one so that is the pre-processing part okay and i can use the same method again np.c underscore this is line number 24 <laughs> and in order to predict we know that my output y or the predicted values y is nothing but the dot product between my data matrix x and my coefficients and that is exactly what we are doing in the second line in the cell 24 okay so what we're doing is x dot product the coefficient and that should give me my y values the predicted y values and what i get is the three y values are 4.4521 10.4927 and 19.55 and so on now that we have the predicted output let's see if i have to plot them so what i'm trying to do is i'm plotting both the lines one is the original data set which are in blue dots and also my predicted trend or predicted model using the red line and it can be done by simply the dot plot method don't worry about the plt dot axis it's nothing but the maximum x values that we are passing and the maximum y value that we are expecting to get it and that is the scale of this graph okay so once we have this uh, plot you can clearly see that i was able to fit a linear model although you can see that the red line did not exactly touch all the points or the blue points 
and that is where the noise takes care of right that is why the no we were not able to fit the data as perfectly as possible using a linear model but nonetheless it was able to generalize the trend and which is a linear trend so now that you know we have seen how to implement methods using the math that we know and we can easily convert those mathematical formulas into a python formula and solve them in the next step let's see how we can use the sklearn library which will be much more easier and you know reliable to solve such problems all right so this is a linear regression problem so we have a package called sklearn and it has a method called linear regression so we are just trying to import that function and before we can use this linear regression what we are trying to do here is instantiate it that means we are just initiating a model and that we are storing it in lean underscore reg okay and in very interesting thing about sklearn library is all of their methods either it is linear regression or logistic regression or random forest classifier etc all follows a very similar pattern so eventually when we see more projects that we will do in our subsequent classes it will it will appear that they actually follow a very standard pattern and that's why this library became so popular in doing machine learning okay so the first thing here the lean underscore reg dot fit so it takes the data matrix x and takes the output label y so what does the fit method do the fit method basically tries to estimate those model parameters so when we were doing it step by step the fit method basically does this line 18 it actually tries to calculate or implement that mathematics behind it but in this case we were writing so many complex equations right lean else dot inverse and blah 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 but in case of sklearn library it actually simplifies our life so much we, all we are doing is dot fit method and we are just giving the input of x and y and internally it actually does that mathematical formula that we just saw so basically it will return the model parameters and that is available through dot intercept underscore and dot coefficient underscore so if we had multiple features then this dot coefficient will be array of those multiple parameters but here as we know we are just trying to have we had only one feature so basically we'll have only one intercept and one model coefficient all right so if you see here my output 27 it says 4.45217 which is the intercept and the array of 3.0207 is nothing but my slope so if you match it with my original value that i found with my step by step which is output 18 you can see they are exactly the same value the only difference is sklearn just did it in two lines of code whereas in my original method i had to write so many lines just to calculate the same thing so that is why sklearn library makes our life so easy and and you know very easy to maintain this code as well so now that we have the uh, you know intercept and the coefficient value I can simply use another method within the same model that is the dot predict and I all I do is just pass the new data set and it will calculate the new output values for me again very straightforward so instead of doing a dot product of the coefficient with my data matrix we just pass the new data along with the dot predict method and it will calculate the y values for me so now if you see sklearn library is very uh, efficient because sometimes what happens is when we have more and more features calculating this uh, you know inverse becomes very challenging so we need better and efficient way of calculating these values so if we try to simply use this kind of mathematics when we have more and more features it could become very challenging that is why sklearn library also comes into picture that why we should use the methods and the techniques in within the sklearn library because they have been optimized to work with you know large features and so on and that we will see in our uh, in upcoming projects but for the time being i think you got an idea about how to convert a mathematical formula into a python code and whenever you work on a real industry project just make sure that whether some functions are already available to do this for you and scikit-learn is one of the go-to library for most of our projects 
all right so i hope you have learned something new today so please make sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll bring you more interesting project and codes and we'll give you explanation of each and everything thanks for watching and have a nice day